Good afternoon. Happy Friday. Sean here, Mountains Garage. Been another week that flew by. I'm not sure I accomplished as much as I wanted to. I know I didn't, not even close. But I'm still cleaning the shop and still dragging stuff home on a regular basis. This isn't a cry for help. It's just what I do. <laughs> so I'm going to briefly go through the events of the last week. Videos like this are only semi-popular. This video doesn't involve a Mopar, a Chrysler car, Dodge actually. So maybe that'll help. You've heard the story of the person, man or woman, I don't know, started with a paper clip and kept trading and ended up with a house. Well, I've done a similar story over the last five years. It started with a nice 396 engine that I bought. I got talked into trading it for another engine, which was junk, which turned into something else, which turned into something else. Traded for this, traded for that, traded for a motorcycle, traded for a truck, and today I traded it for a car. <laughs> you, you be the judge. B, and that's going to play him later, B, E, like the bug. You'll see. Uh, <laughs> you've already seen the opening picture, so the car looks like a bumblebee. It's a 64 Dodge Dot. It is so ugly, it's beautiful. You're not going to see a lot of them on the road. At least I don't. So Maybe I look the other way. <laughs> so here's what's going on in the last week or so. I don't have all the lights on over here, but there's one white table missing, and all the contents of it have been neatly stored somewhat where they belong. I'm moving some equipment over here, trying to make the space work. I really want to put that old FMC tie-in machine in between. The balancer actually works better in this position. If you turn it toward the wall, it just takes up too much space. Brake lay, they keep sliding down, scratching my floor up in the process. This floor paint, I painted the extension on the garage and it was fine and it held just like it looks over here. This all came up because I sprayed everything above and I believe the fine particles got on the floor and the paint didn't grab like it should have. I should have sanded the floor or something. And like a genius while I was building the garage, I stood this lift up and then worked around it. That was a PIA, if you know what I'm saying. So this side's coming. I've ordered shelves. There's a lot of wall here still. And my first thought was make like a pipe, <coughs> excuse me, a pipe rack, but it's more efficient to stand pipe up in the corner. I could point over there actually like my exhaust pipe. It doesn't take up much space when you go vertical with it. Sorry about the camera making you sick, but I got two rows of shelves going to go here that are 12 inches wide. So I don't want to store a lot of stuff inside, but I do have some, you know, scan tools and stuff like that. And more equipment that you know, could live in the garage and be okay. Again, it's got eight feet of wall here to do something with. So that's the plan there. I did some measuring on the gantry crane and it's three inches too narrow to put over this bench. I'd like for it to sit and live over the bench. I could just pull, out, pull it out a little bit and I could load transmissions off and on, put heavy stuff on the bench. So when I'm done using it, over the Model A, it's what I pull the cabin rear end and engine with. It just goes back and forth. It, it's good for where the position it's in. However, it's going to be handier when I modify the top of it and give it three more inches of width. Uh, the airplanes on top of the Model A, that was a gift from a friend of ours, from my son Marcus, and we're going to do a little model aviation eventually. We got the, pretty much the entire contents of a hobby shop in all these boxes, so that was a nice gift. If we crash it, I guess it'll be less of an investment. <laughs> so very thoughtful, very nice. This underused bench is uh, typically a horizontal storage device, but I had it clean this week, and it will be again. The mail came, and a bunch of other stuff happened. And I'm actually going to put a transmission fixture holder on it, and it'll be a lot easier. I won't have to come very far from the door and be able to, you know, another option, because sometimes I use all my available space for building transmission so and if i have a use for this bench i won't maybe hopefully don't <laughs> continue to use it as a shelf 
Out here in the tractor shed for over a year, I've had a homemade rotisserie, you know, auto twirler, rotisserie, whatever you want to call it, taking up space out here. It wasn't as compact as this one, or this pair, this one on the other side of the tractor as well. I did some trading for these last Sunday, and I assembled the one that was in the shed here and posted it, and it sold within hours, so it's gone. These are a lot more compact, and it's nice they have the jacks to go up and down. I'm not sure if these are commercial made or not, but I made a rotisserie five, six years ago, used it, sold it, ended up with that one I just sold, and then now I have a better one. I couldn't pass it up. It's been a week of trading and whatnot, so I traded into this as well. Okay, shield your eyes so you don't go blind. But this is a 1964, I believe, Dodge Dot. It came with lots of parts. Of course, it's not assembled. It's a project like everything else. It came with a 360, 1972 360, uh, an allegedly rebuilt 727, torque converter, flex plate, brand new headers, factory exhaust manifolds, uh, a new cam and oil pan and valve covers for the engine. It came with a eight and three quarter it's actually the eight and three quarter you saw in a video a couple months ago that smelled so bad. 390 shore grip. I welded the spring hangers on it because the springs have been moved in in the back. So that's home again, stinking up my trailer. <laughs> uh, it was a race car. I, I'm praying that decal is a that is a decal and not paint. Of course, there's the beast and it's got this, like a super B. I'll leave the little super B even though obviously it's not. I'm hoping I'm not a person that names vehicles I'll just call them whatever year they are uh, funny story the only name I ever really wanted and I didn't think of it my friend who lives in the White Mountains has the mountain missile it was a duster my last name is mountain and I always wanted that name but the name belongs to him so he's a good buddy but maybe I'll somewhere small I could put it on there but anyway I'm not a car namer so that's got to go but this car is, I believe these came pre-rusted from the factory. So if you take that into consideration, it is, you know, decent. The, I'd say the transmission exploded at one point. I'm not a 727 fan, but that's the direction they happen. When, that happen that's what happens when they blow up. They usually come right through the floor. So it's got aftermarket gauges, which is, you know, all this stuff is okay. Uh, I don't dig the aluminum work in the back. Looks like the side of a trailer. The big Mopi decal. I'm just not that into that, I guess. So we'll do some work there. But, I mean, look at this thing. It actually has a decent smell, too. Old car smell. It ha I don't know what the license plate means. But it's got the master cutoff. It was clearly a drag car. Local. I've seen old pictures of it. I'm, if I post it up on the New England Dragway website, I'm sure I'd get more. Uh, I have boxes and boxes of trim and stuff. I'll show you that, but it is, I don't know. I, when I saw it a few months ago when my friend acquired it, he only lives four miles away. I still need to go back for the motor transmission and it has a brand new, this has a bolt on fiberglass hood, even though there's no hinges, I would prefer to have this hood hinged or a hood hinged. It also comes with a brand new flat glass pin on hood. So we'll see. And then. I have wiper linkage. I have everything to put it back street, if you will. I mean, headlight buckets, get rid of these eyes. <laughs> uh, yeah, so what to do with it, we'll talk about in a minute. But I saw it at my friend's house. It's so ugly, I loved it. The condition is, you know, definitely decent. So it's had some frame connectors put in. I got to get it up in the left and really get a good look at it. But it's an excellent start to something. Again, I wish I had smell vision so you could smell the old gear oil in this uh, eight and three quarter. I cleaned it all out, but you just can't get rid of the smell. And I had it all assembled, and I bought brand new uh, quick performance axles for it, which are in the box in the Suburban. And plus, I have the old ones that I actually made. I, all this stuff was here a couple months ago. So my plan is to put the rear end right back under it. It's an eight and three quarter, three ninety with a shore grip, which is you know. Pretty much perfect, I guess. I mean, if it was 350 or 60, maybe better, but I'll go with 390. I'm not going very far. The original seats were sitting under a tree. 
the chrome and stuff is nice i've mentioned i have a sewing machine i want to learn how to do it so i brought them home i hate having stuff like this sit around because i don't want to put it inside and taking up space outside the mice are going to steal all the stuff out of it and probably live in it but cross that bridge when we come to it these are the original seats it's a gt car dot gt so i'm guessing the interior was originally gold while i was loading up stuff i traded a new, a new flex plate <laughs> For this, I believe, a 39 Dodge cab. So, you know, if I put it on the front lawn and put Christmas lights on it, it'll be something. So, it's a $100 lawn ornament. So, my friend is very meticulous. The one that had the 64 dot. And one of the inner fenders has been cut for a header. And the transmission exploded. So, he went and found... I don't know where do you even find... 64 Dodge Dot pieces, but there's a complete frame rail, an inner fender, a complete tranny tunnel, firewall, stuff I'll never use. I'll just patch what's in there probably, but cool to have. I'll pile it up. Not related to the Mopar, but I did some trading for some wheels and tires. I'm thinking the 47 Ford, which we'll see at the very end of this video. I'm going to, I got to build a frame for it anyway. Might as well build something with big tires and stuff. I think it'd be cool. Uh, the slick's not going to work it, but put some street tires on it. So anyway, the Mopar stuff, I got rear brakes, which are new. There's drums that fit. They're in the car. Uh, again, the 360 comes with a new cam, oil pan, valve covers, stuff, lifters, time and chain, brand new radiator in the box, aluminum radiator. Brand new small block Mopar headers, two boxes of wiper pots and trim and gauges. One aluminum valve cover for a wall ornament. The factory small block manifolds, which is cool. I was doing, doing a little research on the 64 dot and they look kind of special. Now I got a set. And my buddy didn't like that they had did some modifications for the oil pan on the original K member. So he got one of those too. Stuffed here in the garage extension is the 47 Ford cab. I showed you that a couple videos ago. I don't know which one it was. I picked up this 41 Willys nose, pickup nose. And I think with very little work, it'll go on there. Pickup cabs of that era are all basically the same size. It's going to take some cut work on the cowl. I have the stock nose for the 47 Ford but this bit looks better i think this would be cool this is the one i want to actually pro street and everything so we'll see it's right now it's just kind of in the thought process you know engineering in your head portion of the program but it does look pretty cool in my opinion All right, so that's a quick tour of this week's mayhem and dragging more stuff on. I'm supposed to be cleaning the shop, and every time I clear out six feet, I put 12 feet of stuff in it. So, what becomes of the dart? Uh, save your comments about it. Should definitely get a Mopar engine, and Ford should have Ford engines, and Mopar should have Mopar. It doesn't matter. I'm a hot rodder. You're a hot rodder. Do anything you want. It's your car. That 64 Dodge dart is not. A collectible in my opinion I could do anything I wanted to somebody already did I mean they didn't even, well they might have improved the looks I'm not sure my first thought was to LS swap it I might not I mean I do have most everything to put the 360 back in there it wouldn't be super fast but it'd be fun it doesn't need to be super fast I'm building other cars to do that I, in my brain, I want to make every car the same. It ends up being something that the fun may fall out of it in the process of making it an eight second car. So why not change my disconnect I got in my head and it just maybe just put the stock motor back in it. Well, no, it, it's not the stock motor, but a small block Chrysler, which I was watching Uncle Tony the other night. If you watch him, his channel, he's a Mopar expert. 
he was going over all the differences in all the year diets, and I actually paid attention because I have one. And the small block Chrysler was made to fit that car, not the other way around. Interesting. They wanted to put a V8 in it, and they made a new one. Maybe it was coincidence, but hey, he says they made the engine to fit the car. And in subsequent years, they widened the frame rails to make it easier, two inches. So, will ILS swap it? I don't know. Will I make it some kind of pro street thing? I don't know. I mean, the springs are already moved in. I'm going to put a 275 tire on it. There's pretty, quite a bit of room back there. I have three or four sets of wheel tubs if I wanted to go bigger, but, you know, I kind of always wanted to have a Mopile with leaf springs and a pinion snubber. I mean, that's what I probably told him my first job. The guy was a Mopile drag racer. He says that's all you ever needed. He went mid nines with a pinion snubber. So I'm probably never going that fast in that car. So uh, I'm just going to let it unfold. I'm, I'm going to put the eight and three quarter back under it. It's useless to not be rolling. Uh, I did have to, speaking of not rolling, I sacrificed my 47 International project that was on a four wheel drive frame. I traded for this thing. It also didn't have a rear end, so this morning we're unloading a car without a rear end and putting the truck back on the trailer without a rear end. And, you know, and then all the parts go with it. So watch, and in the future, we will see what happens. But in the immediate future, like before winter, so this is summertime, so it needs to get going. I'm going to put it on the left, put the rear end back under it. Maybe put this Mopar drivetrain back in it. I know the A-body TV linkage for the transmission is special just for an A-body of that vintage, so that might be hard to find, but that's a, you know, the problem with having a 727. You have to have external linkage because they don't have modulators and stuff. So, But I can figure all that out, swap it to a cable, who knows. When I start thinking about putting the Mopar engine in and what it potentially costs, I'd much rather spend my effort and money putting something that's going to really make some power in there. But don't get mad. I know you can make a lot of power with a small block Chrysler, but not the one I have because it looks pretty stock and it comes with a camshaft and an aluminum intake. <laughs> anyway, I love you all. Thanks for watching. Next video, we'll actually do something. How's that? Take her easy. Have a good Friday.